how do you know if your process is capable? Process capability (PP) measures the process spread versus the specification spread. In other words, how distributed the outcome of your process is versus what requirements are. We have to use PP and PPK when we are initially setting up the process. After a process has reached statistical control, we have to use CP and CPK. Let's imagine that your process has two specifications, a lower specification limit, which is the lowest value allowed, and an upper specification limit, the highest value allowed. The difference between the two is the specification spread, sometimes referred to as the voice of customer or client. The process spread is the distance between the highest value generated and the lowest. This is sometimes referred to as the voice of the process. Think of the specification spread as the sides of your garage. Those are static. They are not moving and it is important that your process puts values inside those bounds. The process spread is the size of the car you are trying to fit in. Can a process meet specifications? The answer is in the amount of variation in your process. If your process spread is greater than the specification spread, then the answer is no. However, if the process spread is less than the specification spread, then the process variation is low enough for it to fit. Now look at the two graphs on the screen. The first one shows that the process meets the specification and thus has a potential of good performance. The second one shows that the process does not meet the specifications and thus has a bad potential performance. Let us now learn to calculate the process capability or performance index PP. PP is equal to difference between the USL and LSL divided by 6 times the standard deviation sigma. The fatness or dispersion of the bell curve. What is a good process capability number? According to Six Sigma, we want a PP of above 1.5 because that would reflect a process with less than 3.4 dpmo, the definition of Six Sigma quality. How do we come to that? Well, we want to have Six Sigma's standard deviations between the mean of the process and the LSL. Since a normal distribution is symmetric, that means we also want six sigmas between the mean and the USL. That's a total of 12 sigmas between the USL and LSL. In other words, USL minus LSL should equal 12 for us to reach Six Sigma quality standards of 3.4 dpmo. See how that is reflected in the equation PP equals USL minus LSL divided by 6S. Let's replace USL minus LSL with 12. So PP is equal to 12 Sigma divided by 6S which is equal to 2 sigma divided by s. Pretty simple, right? Process Capability Index Look at the image on the screen. It shows that the car is not able to get inside easily. That is, the process is poorly centered. This is not acceptable. PPK is another performance index that measures how close the current process means proximity is to the specification limits. In other words, does this process deliver acceptable results? 
The way we tell this is trying to see how centered the process is. If the process is not centered well, it is deemed not acceptable. Calculating PPK There are two ways to calculate PPK depending on how your process is aligning. Number 1. Process mean close to USL If your process mean that is central tendency is closer to USL, use the formula PPK equal to USL minus X bar divided by 3S where X bar is the process mean. Number 2. Process mean close to LSL If your process mean is closer to LSL, use PPK equal to X bar minus LSL divided by 3S where X bar is the process mean. To interpret the PPK scores, note the following. PPK can be determined by dividing the Z score by 3. A Z score is the same as a standard score, the number of standard deviations above the mean. Z is equal to X minus mean of the population divided by standard deviation. So, PPK is equal to USL minus mu divided by 3 sigma which is equal to Z divided by 3. It's so easy, right?